Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting and a very common topic, headache. The primary headache and its high yield points. So our discussion will be on the primary headache and the high yield points. The headache is a very very common disorder, very commonly seen by neurologists and even by general physicians and we need to know the most important concepts of headache. So today we shall talk about the primary headache and the high yield points. The best approach to a person who's got headache is the approach suggested by the International Classification of Headache. According to the International Classification of Headache, the headache can be divided into two broad categories, primary headache and secondary headache. Primary headache is that headache which does not have any cause. Secondary headache is that headache which has got a cause like brain tumor or infections or subarachnoid hemorrhage. Primary headache has got no cause. The headache itself is the diagnosis. One of the classic features of primary headache is that it's a recurring type of headache. Person gets headache, we treat only to get back the headache again. So person has headache, we treat the headache subsides only for the headache to develop again. So it's a recurring type of headache, primary headache. Whereas secondary headache is a usually progressive headache. So secondary headache, there's a cause and it's a progressive disorder. Primary headache, there is no cause and it's a recurring type of headache. And amongst primary headache, we have four important disorders. Migraine, tension type headache, trigeminal autonomic cephalgia, the cluster headache, and other type of headaches. So primary headache, there is no cause. So how are we going to differentiate between these three important subcategories of primary headache? That is the migraine, tension type headache and cluster headache. If we know the important salient features, we can differentiate these three types of headache confidently. Otherwise, it becomes very difficult to differentiate these three categories of primary headache, especially to differentiate tension type of headache and migraine is going to be difficult. So we have to go methodically step by step and then it becomes easier to differentiate these three types of primary headache. So the characteristic features by which we can differentiate migraine from tension type headache from cluster headache are sight, age, gender, pain, family history, duration, pain relieving factors, provocating factors, the usual features, the specific features, the link and finally the prevention and treatment. So with these characteristics, if we go methodically, we can differentiate migraine from tension type headache from cluster headache. First the sight. Migraine. Migraine usually the sight is unilateral. In fact, it is known as one-sided headache. So migraine, the usual site of headache is unilateral. For tension type headache, it is a generalized type of headache. And for cluster headache, it is orbitofrontal. So for cluster headache, it is orbitofrontal. For, for tension type headache, it is generalized. And for migraine, it is a unilateral type of headache. But before we understand the pain of headache, we need to know what are the pain sensitive structures. Not all the structures of the face and the, and the cranium are pain sensitive. In fact, if the brain is cut, there is no pain, absolutely no pain even if the brain is cut because there are no pain receptors. The pain sensitive structures are the meninges and the vessels in the meninges basically. So the meninges, the coverings of the brain and the vessels in the meninges, these are highly pain sensitive. The brain by and large is pain insensitive. That's why 
we get real pain and headache when we have the either the inflammation of meninges or any chemical irritation of the meninges inflammation or infection of the meninges meningitis we have severe headache irritation of the meninges by blood products like subarachnoid hemorrhage again we have headache we don't generally get headache in intra cerebral hemorrhage because there are no pain receptors unless the intra cerebral hemorrhage produces raised intracranial tension when the meninges get affected only then and then only there will be headache otherwise intra cerebral hemorrhage per se will not produce headache so headache is basically produced by pain sensitive structures especially the meninges and meningeal vessels so the site in migraine is unilateral for tension type headache it is generalized and for cluster headache it is orbitofrontal age migraine is a disorder of the young and therefore usually we see migraineous headache in persons who are less than 40 years a person who develops headache for the first time after 40 years is unlikely to have migraine 40 is an arbitrary cut off point so usually migraine is seen in young adults tension type headache is seen in adults and cluster headache is seen in both adolescents and adults gender migraine is very common in women in fact it is commoner in women as compared to men likewise tension type headache is also common in women as compared to men though the stress is same in all individuals everyone has got some form of stress or the other but then these migraineous patients seem to be reacting overtly to the stressful situations though the stress remains the same in all people the overt reaction the over reaction over sensitivity overtly reacting to the stressful situation causes the pain so it is and we all know that women are more sensitive to uh, all kinds of emotional stimuli and therefore it is more common in women so migraine is more common in women tension type headache is more common in women but cluster headache cluster headache is more common in men in fact the ratio is about 5 is to 1 so cluster headache is more common in men than women whereas migraine and tension type headache are more common in women than men family history usually in migraine there is a family history the mother may be having the history of migraine so migraine usually there is a family history but for tension type headache and cluster headache there is no family history the type of pain the quality of pain in migraine the quality of pain is throbbing and pulsating throbbing and pulsating whereas in tension type of headache the quality of pain is tightness and in cluster headache it is intense and non throbbing the duration migraine usually lasts for few hours about from 4 to about 24 hours and beyond so it lasts for four, from 4 hours to few hours that is migraine the duration the tension type headache the duration is continuous going on for days to weeks and even sometimes more than few weeks also so it's a continuous type of headache that is tension type headache the cluster headache on the contrary is usually seen in the night and therefore it is known as nocturnal type of pain one to within one to two hours after falling asleep after going to bed so the pain of cluster headache is usually nocturnal as we are going to sleep so migraine it is four hours to few hours tension type headache it is continuous and cluster headache is usually in the night nightly headache the pain relieving factor very important in migraine patient they have severe headache so much so that they want to sit or sleep quietly they do not want to have any kind of light or any noise they want a pleasant atmosphere and then they sleep quietly if they walk the pain intensifies so they want to sleep quietly but but in cluster headache it is just the opposite they can't sit quiet they can't stand quiet they have to pace around and then only the their, their pain seems to come down so migraine headache comes down with rest whereas cluster headache 
comes down with movement very important clinical point and tension diabetic there's uh, no relationship with movement so migraine headache comes down with good adequate rest and cluster headache seems to decrease with movement the provoking factors the provoking or factors or triggering factors for migraine is light bright light and therefore we see walk in sun for a long time especially in the afternoons the scorching heat they they have a tendency to develop headache or hearing noises they have tendency to get headache migraineous headache hunger pains stress lack of sleep we need at least 8 hours of good sleep a day if we, if the sleep is insufficient they are prone to develop migraine and sometimes some food substances also so these are all the provoking factors bright light noise hunger pains lack of sleep and some dietary factors and for tension type of day it is the stress which precipitates so stress precipitates tension type of headache and in cluster headache alcohol seems to be a provoking factor in some of the persons who are having cluster headache so for migraine the provoking factors are light noise hunger pains lack of sleep and some dietary contents food items for tension type headache it is stress and for cluster headache it seems to be alcohol in some patients the usual features the usual features what we see in migraine especially persons with migraine with aura they'll have the scintillating scotomas fortification spectra nausea phonophobia vomiting and photophobia so especially in persons having migraine with aura so they have or they know that they are going to get a severe migraineous headache aura symptoms precipitate symptoms which are just preceded uh, before the development of the headache so they can have nausea vomiting photophobia phonophobia scintillating scotomas or fortification spectra that is migraine and headache without any of these features a simple headache without any of these associated features is tension type headache so very important point to differentiate plain headache is tension type headache headache with associated features like nausea vomiting photophobia phonophobia fortification spectra or a visual scotomas or or scintillating uh, scotomas all these are associated with migraine headache and for cluster headache very important point is periodicity in fact it is known as alarm clock headache in fact there have been instances where a person can say yeah i am getting headache at this particular point of time so the time right now should be 2 o'clock and to the amazement of everyone it is 2 o'clock so the headache comes at the same time every day this is known as alarm clock headache the periodicity is one of the characteristic features of cluster headache specific features the link the migraine there has been a link association of migraine with the trigeminal vascular system the trigeminal vascular system seems to be the focus of the migraineous pain the trigeminal vascular system in migraine for tension type headache it is nil and for cluster headache it is the hypothalamus that's why they have the periodicity that's why they have the other features like lacrimation rhinorrhea nasal stuffiness all these autonomic features are because because of the link between the hypothalamus and cluster headache finally prevention the prevention of migraine basically consists of three groups of drugs the beta blockers tricyclic antidepressants and calcium channel blockers plus or minus anti epileptic drugs for tension type headache because it is because of stress depression and most of the persons have depression and stress we tend to give tricyclic antidepressants either amitriptyline or nortriptyline for cluster headache for prevention we give valproate and lithium the treatment the treatment of migraine basically consists of three groups of drugs the triptons 5ht 1bd agonists especially for acute headache non non steroidal anti inflammatory agents like 
like naproxen or, or diclofenac and dopamine antagonist like metaclopramide. Why we give dopamine antagonist? Because one, the migraine headache is associated with nausea and vomiting. Second, during the attack of migraine, they have uh, the distension of stomach and therefore absorption of drugs becomes impaired. So we give metaclopramide or dopamine antagonist so that the absorption be becomes better. Uh, the distension of the stomach comes down and it prevents nausea and vomiting. And the treatment of tension type headache, the pain, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents. For cluster headache, the treatment is very unusual. We give oxygen as treatment for cluster headache and uh, triptons. So one important high yield point is that for cluster headache, the treatment is going to be oxygen. Oxygen is the treatment for cluster headache. So if you know all these important characteristics, then we can go methodically and differentiate migraine from tension type headache, from cluster headache, which are all the subcategories of primary headache. Otherwise, even for a seasoned neuro neurologist, it may be difficult to differentiate sometimes between migraine and tension type headache. So this is the overview of the high yield points of primary headache. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture. If you have any suggestions or comments, kindly post on to my YouTube channel. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Srinivas Con Medical Concepts and my every page, Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.